Hi, Startup Grind. My name is Mike Tria, and I'm really happy to be here with you all today. I want to share the story of how Atlassian built our engineering organization. And specifically, I want to talk about how we built our career frameworks for Atlassians and how our culture enabled us to be able to do this well. So let's move on. If you're not familiar with Atlassian, our mission is to unleash the potential of every team. As a head of engineering at Atlassian, I oversee our cloud transformation and our platform engineering teams that support our North Star of being a cloud first company. That is what we're trying to do. Another key part of my role is partnering with all of the other engineering leaders within Atlassian to essentially build out the engineering organization itself and transform it into a larger, more well-oiled machine. Our goal is to chart the next chapter of growth to add more value for our people, our customers, and our partners. So before I go into details on the actual career framework, I want to talk culture first. Bear with me. I'm going to talk about culture for a few minutes. So don't, don't mute this. Don't turn me off. Trust me, if you've ever rolled out a framework like this before, this stuff is actually really important. Because overall, a career framework is the most effective when it's closely tied with the culture of a company. Career frameworks and ladders are actually decently different company to company. I'll go into details on why. So the culture at Atlassian is pretty open and transparent. And we have a lot of learning and a high degree of ownership from our engineering teams. So one of our core principles, just going through a few of them, we are loosely coupled, but highly aligned. So what does that mean specifically? Well, it means engineers make the decisions for the most part within an organization, and they have a fair degree of autonomy, but they align to things like common practices within the company. Uh, so often decisions don't involve escalating up to leadership or VPs for things to get done. Projects tend to move in a pretty distributed fashion. Another one is on transparency is being open to failures. Uh, instead, we embrace them as lessons learned. And we have a blameless culture that allows us to identify inefficiencies really early on and optimize those learnings across teams uh, to improve the experience for our customers. And we know mistakes will be made. We, we do them quite a bit, um, but by sharing our failures, it helps us be better. A, a good example, if I'm going to be specific, is how we do post-incident reviews or incident post-mortems. When we have an incident, these things happen. Um, what we do is we gather the data, we figure out the steps to be done, and we build a PIR, a post-incident review. And then we share it. It's a written record that details everything that happened. And it doesn't point at people. It points at systems to be improved. Um, this really helps folks be comfortable sh sharing and oversharing information to allow us to improve and be better. Um, without this culture, we frankly would not be able to fail fast um, and continue and innovate at the scale and pace that we're growing. Our culture also allows engineers to be very outspoken. Um, and we're going to get back to that later in the deck of why this is important. But let's actually now go through the story of how we built these frameworks. So let's begin with the goal, right? So the goal is to invest in the long-term career development of Atlassians alongside the success of our business. So we wanted to get our engineers set up to do the best work of their lives by ensuring that they had the right tools, the right processes, and the right rituals to be successful. So let me set the scene. It's 2017. We had about 800 people in the organization and we were growing really, really fast. At the time, we had really great engineers that were helping us build our future, and we were about to go all in on cloud at this point in about 2017. But what we didn't have is any well-defined set of engineering roles, levels, ladders. We didn't really have any of that. Um, and as an engineering organization matures, um, you reach an inflection point where the growth of the company outpaces the growth of the processes that you put in place. <clears throat> because when it last seen had about 200 people, you didn't need that stuff at least not to the same degree that we did. At 800, we certainly did. And as we were growing, we really did. Um, there were some engineers that were, you know, I'd say pretty good self-starters. They kind of had a picture of where they wanted to take their career. And those engineers were, were fine in this model. But for the folks that were perhaps newer in their career or didn't have a great sense of where they wanted to go, they were pretty much in the dark. Atlassian wasn't giving them anything to tell them essentially where to grow. So we wanted to clearly outline their growth opportunities, and we wanted them to stick around in Atlassian to do that as opposed to leaving. So prior to 2017, um, as we grew, we started to see repeated problems um, because we didn't have these frameworks in place. So our engineers, as I mentioned, wanted clarity on the next step of their career. Um, another thing was around promotions. You might find this in your organization. Because we didn't have these like really clearly defined sets of qualifications, behaviors, and expectations by level, promotions across departments 
pretty different. Um, and it raised questions for engineers of like, hey, do I have to be on that team uh, to get a promotion with this particular type of role? Or why is one person getting promoted and someone isn't? You, you raise questions around career progression in that situation. Plus managers, frankly, you know, we've talked about this all from the perspective of the engineer, not knowing what, you know, where to go in their career and what their next steps are. Their managers were, I'd say, equal in the dark. Um, especially for first line managers, it was difficult for them to coach someone on how to get to the next level. And they wanted consistent promotion guidelines too. So to solve this problem, you've got two paths. One path is you can go to market and you could buy career profiles. You can go to an organization or look at a peer and copy what they're doing. The other option is to build it internally. And what we elected to do was to build it internally. And we felt like that for a few reasons. One, when we looked at how other companies were doing their career profiles, we actually found pretty big differences between them all. So it wasn't just like pick a company and copy the model. The second thing is we had a pretty unique culture. We had a very unique culture of, again, very much bottoms up empowerment, open collaboration and communication, a heavy documentation culture and parallelism between engineering and management. We wanted those to feel similar in terms of the tracks. So what we elected to do is follow our values and, um, get feedback from employees and build this framework in house. Um, and this aligns nicely to our company value, which is open company, no BS. So we set forth um, to define the expectations and behaviors for a successful engineer at every level of their career. So here's what we came up with at a high level. So in addition to doing deep research on the topic, right? So we did go out to market and look at some of the best practices out there, um, but the TLDR of the four areas. So one, um, lead and inspire. Uh, this is a set of behaviors and expectations that define what really leadership means at Atlassian. And this applies just as much to managers as it does to engineers. So as an example of something in here, um, uh, working as a feature lead on a project, how do you do that? What are the right expectations at a senior level, at a principal level and beyond? Master the craft. We want our engineers to become experts at what they do. And we want them to develop those amazing products while continuing to learn and improve their craft. This area, Master the Craft, contains probably the most detailed technical capabilities for an engineer. The third one is driving outcomes. It doesn't matter what you built if it doesn't get into a customer's hands, as we say at Atlassian. And this means we prioritize measuring customer value sooner. We value getting value to, from customers over elegance in the software. And we want engineers to think really critically about how we can deliver value to customers even faster. And on customers, um, we expect custom, uh, engineers to have really great information about our customers' problems. We want them to know what they like, what they don't like. Having customer impact is talks about putting instrumentation and things in place, but really as an engineer, the more you progress in your career, both in a, an individual contributor track or a manager track, you're getting more nuanced details about the business and about how customers use our products. So with these four pillars established, we were able to do basically more. Um, we then built the actual job profiles on the back of those four pillars. So we sent, you can think about it like a grid. You have all of those pillars across the top as columns, and then you have all of the levels within the organization as rows. Um, and for us, what we decided to do is we wanted them to be open, fair, and equitable. We didn't want them to be secret. So let's say you were a senior engineer and you're looking at principal. We didn't want you to just see the step to principal. We also wanted you to be able to see the step after principal and after that or the track to management. We wanted all of these profiles to be available from a junior developer all the way up to a head of engineering so that you could fully chart out your career. So those profiles do a few key things. They try and solve a bunch of the problems, but they don't solve them all. And I'll get to that. So first they clarify role expectations. As I mentioned before, there's a class of engineers that isn't just going to be the person that's going to go to their manager and say, Hey, I want to get promoted. Tell me what I need to do. There are some engineers that want to look at a document that kind of gives them that perspective of how much should they push? How much should they discuss with their manager? So they clarify the role expectations. That's the first thing. The second thing is they define the differences. And I think this is really key and an area that a lot of folks that put career profiles together miss this. It's one thing to say, this is what a, let's say an engineer does. And this is what a senior engineer does. It's another thing to say, let's say you're an engineer and you want to get to senior. How do you think about the difference between those two things? What's the progression of a particular skill from here to here? And the document does a pretty good job of defining those differences so that someone knows what to cover. 
Otherwise, if you don't do that, engineers treat these as like a checkbox exercise where they just look at every single skill for a senior engineer and they start going through and saying, check, 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 which is not what you want. The third thing is it actually establishes a career ladder. Um, we actually have two ladders at Atlassian. Um, one is an individual career ladder and another is a manager ladder and they actually run in parallel to each other. So what that means is at a senior engineering level, that is a parallel to a first line manager at Atlassian. A second line manager then maps to a principal. And this happens for many reasons. The first is we want to treat them as the same in terms of the impact that they have to the company. And secondarily, we actually want engineers to experiment with management and we want to be able to give managers the ability to go back and be an IC again, if that's something that they really want to choose. The last thing they do is it actually guides the growth conversation. Before we had these career frameworks, when an engineer or a manager was going through a growth conversation, they wanted to get to the next level with their manager, it would be this sort of rough and tumble conversation. Maybe there would be a doc here, a doc there. Now what happens is folks essentially start by copying and pasting the profile, and then they kind of go through it and customize it for that particular person. And that works out really, really great. So once we've built these frameworks, um, we built them, then we have to communicate them out. And this is the tricky part. And this is where we ran into some troubles at Atlassian. And it's where our culture comes in. I would say overall, 50% of the effort of building essentially an entire career framework for people, 50% of the work is building the framework. The other 50% is rolling it out and communicating it well. And we have a pretty vocal team. And this is where we made some missteps. So I wanted to share some of those with you so that you can learn from us. So I think there's this perspective that um, when a bunch of managers and a bunch of engineers and HR folks come and build a document of a career framework that, you know, we think we're done. Here we go. Here's the document. It's hundred percent. This is how we're going to do our career framework. When we first put it out there though, we got a lot of feedback. There were folks that disagreed with some of the expectations by level. There were some of the folks that disagreed with the differences and they disagreed with the, I'd say the level of specificity or how generic they were. Some items were open to interpretation, some were too specific. So to address this feedback, we did a few things. Um, first, we held a bunch of sessions with engineers. Um, we did internal blog posts, we held QA sessions, we hosted town halls. All of that is fine, but all of that is essentially one-way communication, essentially towards the engineers. What we were lacking was a feedback loop back to us. Luckily, we built this in Confluence. And so not that I'm up here to sort of pitch Atlassian's products, but any kind of way you do a growth profile or career planning, you're going to get it. You're going to get about five to 10% wrong. You're going to miss some of it. And so what happened was we had all this in confluence. And so what we did is we gathered small groups of folks um, that had really actually valuable perspective to us. And we actually started just doing edits live on confluence. Um, we had groups, we did reviews on this and we allowed a back and forth communication. Once we did that, tensions cooled considerably. And this turned from, oh no, is this gonna work? To, okay, this is really working, this is gonna succeed. It took us about, I'd say six to 12 months to finalize the frameworks. But once we did, we began to see really positive signals across the organization. The biggest learning, again, that, we, that I would take away from this is legislate for 90% and let your team get you the other 10% of the way there. And we should have led with that right at the start. So overall, this has actually been a really big success for us. We saw an uptick in employees raising their hands for projects they hadn't been able to participate in, um, ones that would challenge them and help them continue learning. For example, uh, we have engineers that would plot a career path for themselves and they would look and say, ah, to get to senior, I really need experience feature leading a project. Ah, I hadn't considered that before. So they would talk with their team and try and figure out an area to feature lead. Um, in the example, we've actually seen a lot as folks would focus on developer efficiency and effectiveness. So they would raise their hand. They would say, hey, I'm going to run a project that's going to improve the efficiency of my team and the teams that are around me. This is really, really good because it puts that ownership in the hands of the engineer and not just making it the manager who is trying to figure out what is really a very customized career track for every individual person. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned, is engineers taking ownership of their own career development and career goals the conversations they have with their manager are a lot more tight and a lot more tuned as a result. And before I fast forward to where we are today, I wanna to quickly mention one more thing. We introduced something else into the promotion process, by the way, that became 
a lot more consistent across the organization once we roll this out. We introduced something called a calibrator. So it's a senior engineering leader that sits on the promotion process. The idea of the role is to drive fairness and basically equitability across the entire process. I mention this because it's something that made sense for our team in the process, but it's not something you might see out there in the market. Um, no two engineering teams are exactly the same. So we wanted someone that could calibrate when we're doing things like promotions. Again, it's why it's important. You've got to look at your own company and look at your own values and culture to understand what makes sense for you. So five years later, um, so 2017 is when we rolled this out. We finished by about the end of 2017 and we're continuing. We are still using this today. So Atlassian now has over 5,000 engineers and we're continuing to use the exact same docs, but we've edited them every year. We edit them based on the needs of the business, right? So now we're more cloud company and a little less on-premise as a result. So a lot of the way you build and ship software, the behaviors and skills and things that you need to be an effective engineer or a manager have changed. And so we've incorporated that into the profiles. And right now we're scaling to 25,000 engineers in the coming years. So our career frameworks, they're a fixture um, in every career development conversation. This is exactly the outcome we were looking for way back in 2017, and we are never done. We are always working on them and riffing on them. Um, I would say one of the biggest lessons we took away from this is having a people first approach. It's more than about having good intentions for your employees. It's about listening to them, especially when you don't get it quite right. And I would say there are many types of things that you roll out to an engineering organization that you just won't get right. Again, legislate for 90% and let folks get the other 10% and trust their judgment that they're going to figure it out. Frankly, they know their job better than you do. And so while it's easier said than done, when you're growing from teams of hundreds to teams of thousands, you do have to develop these policies and processes that support your people. And I would say from our perspective, the career profiles that we built have been an overwhelming success for us. I know every organization is different, but I'm hoping that some of the ideas that we went through here can help your organization. Now, it goes without saying, I'm sure you want to just see the profile, right? It's like, hey, great, good stuff. Love the pillars. Can we see the profile? So I want to tell you, we are fine tuning them right now for you. As I mentioned, we're always changing these things, right? So they're very rich. They're very detailed. They're probably the most dense thick career profiles I've ever seen in the industry. Um, we will be open sourcing them later this year. So uh, stay tuned. If you watch the engineering blog, you'll be able to actually have a chance to take a look at them for yourself and incorporate them into your organization. But again, knowing what I mentioned before, I would suggest that if you take them, adopt them to your organization for what makes sense for you. How many levels should you have? Should you have too many, too few? Really depends on your particular organization. And if anyone wants to discuss this topic further, I would love to chat. This is a huge passion of mine, so I'm happy to connect. You can find me on LinkedIn. So I really appreciate the time here at Startup Grind to talk through what is really a quite challenging problem at a growing organization, at what point you decide to introduce career framework, how to define it, how to get it right within your organization. I hope you enjoyed the talk and I hope you enjoy the rest of Startup Grind. Thank you very much.